Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My ASMR style is different than most I've heard. I don't make random clicks or odd sounds. My dog does those anyway. I write and tell stories about gay men finding love. My voice is naturally soft. So I do a soft spoken ASMR. It's time to keep your obsidian close and clutch your silver because those can hurt a wolf. It's time to revisit the Moonfang tribe of wolves. We're not going to focus on Cory and Lucas this time. Camden needed to tell his story. As you remember, his family attacked our tribe of wolves and put Jack and Edmund in the hospital. This story takes place two months after the events in Checkmate, on the full moon called the Worm Moon. The full moon in March. Let's begin. It had taken me weeks to track the other wolves to this place. Wolf Hollow. They lived here, happy, with mates, clean, and had food. They didn't know what it was like to live on the streets. They didn't know what it meant to be on the run. I held a small oval of obsidian one that the silver wolf and his friends had left with me two months ago, before they told me never to come back. They didn't know how much I wanted to be with them, but that was impossible. My family had attacked them. My dad had really hurt a couple of them. I suspected my grandfather had found this place and attacked out of revenge. I haven't seen my grandfather or my father since January. I'm Camden Lewis, a monster a fiend, one of the moon cursed, a werewolf, and I'm afraid I could be a murderer. I don't know what happens to me on the full moon. I have light brown hair and golden brown eyes. I'm very nearsighted, so I have to wear glasses, but I'm so broke I haven't had my prescription updated for years. My clothes are old ripped jeans that have too many holes. My shirt and jacket were whatever I could steal and there's a Catholic cathedral in town that never closes. That's where I've washed up and slept while I wasn't begging. That's why I'm here. I'm begging. I don't have anywhere to go to lock me up so I don't kill anyone. Maybe these guys do. My family has been fleeing the hunters for years. I didn't even have a chance to graduate high school. Dad kept us moving. I crept to the edge of the bushes and trees and looked out. Wolf Hollow was a really nice place. A good hike from the city. It was a private preserve owned by the Compton family that sheltered wolves. And werewolves. It was a really, really nice place. Monsters like me should never come here. This time, I needed to. A large two-story stone house with multiple cars pulled up to it a covered deck that wrapped around the house, and several tall pines sheltered it from the sun. Somebody had taken the time to plant lawns and gardens around the place. It smelled of beef stew and home-baked chocolate chip cookies and roses and pine. It smelled like I imagined a home must smell like. I've never had one. We've been on the road for most of my life. My mom left us when Dad decided he wanted the moon more than a family. I wish she had taken me with her. Today was the worst time to find the other wolves, because tonight was the March full moon, the worm moon. According to Grandfather, the earthworms begin crawling around on the worm moon to get the soil ready for spring. I felt like a worm, because I had done a lot of crawling and hiding since I had met these wolves. I felt like a worm, because I'm a monster. Since these wolves had defeated my family, I've been alone. We were never much of a family, more of a small military battalion. But we were together. My father, Easton, was a psychopathic killer who I found out later the police had locked up in an insane asylum. I wonder what they thought when he changed into a wolf the last full moon. Who had Dad killed then? My grandfather had ruled what was left of our tribe. It was only his way, no other, period. A car pulled up and parked, 
A man with dark hair got out, then helped a woman out. He wore a cast and a white t-shirt. She wore a stylish dark red blouse and black jeans. A woman ran out of the house. She had black hair streaked with silver and wore black everything. She had a silver chain necklace with a pentagram hanging from it. Jack, Miranda, how was your trip? Hot, Jack said. Anna, it was fun. You should see New Orleans in the spring, Miranda said. It's beautiful. I brought pictures. I can't wait to see them, Anna said. I would have thought you didn't need the cast anymore. I don't, but everybody expects it when they hear what happened, Jack said, sliding the cast off and leaving it in the car. Why don't you go out back? Corey, Lucas, and Gavin are there with Salvador. I'll be there in a few minutes, Anna said. Aren't Paola and Jace coming? Miranda asked. You know how our boys go through meat. They're picking up more as we speak. I hope you're hungry, because we're going to have non-stop steaks, Anna said. Food? And more people coming? I'm starving. But there's no way they'd have any kind of mercy. Not after January. Don't cook them this time, okay? Jack said. Miranda swatted his shoulder. Jack, you can have your steak rare if you want, but some of us prefer cooked food. And would you please use a knife and a fork this time? Last time you ate like a Neanderthal. I'll show you Neanderthal. When we're alone, Jack said, wrapping his arm around Miranda and nuzzling her neck. Save it for the bedroom, Anna said, laughing. You two are as bad as Corey and Lucas. Another car pulled in and parked next to Jack's. Two men got out. Mark? Anna said and walked over and hugged him. It's good to see you. I didn't think you could make it. Mark? Oh, no. He was here after all. The man who must hate me after what I did. I wiped my suddenly sweating palms on my jeans. It was an eight-hour drive, Anna, he said. I learned I couldn't go it alone after all. I need some help. Let me introduce my brother, Barry. Jack glanced at Miranda and Anna, then at Mark. He knows? Last month, he saw me transform on the full moon, Mark said. I couldn't figure out why Mark wanted to be alone, so I followed him into one of the animal trailers, Barry said. Then he did the craziest thing. He took his clothes off and climbed into an empty animal cage and locked the door behind him. There was a window facing east, and all he did was stare at it. I thought he was nuts and even told him so. He screamed at me to leave and lock the door behind me. The full moon rose as we argued. He became a believer, Mark said. Scared the crap out of me, especially when he started howling, Barry said. If I ever catch the guy that did this to my brother... Give me a liar, because I'm putting that guy in the hospital. Corey told me his name was Camden, Mark said, so softly that normal people couldn't hear him. I was hoping that you could teach my brother what to do when I change. I can't believe it's been two months since I was bitten. And I'm the one that bit him. I'm the one they hate. I'm the one they want to put into the hospital. I'd leave, but I have to beg for help. Having Mark here made this a lot harder and humiliating. I knew what I had to do. Jack tilted his head a little and sniffed the air. Of course we can help, Anna said, but first, Barry, come on back and meet the guys. Even Corey, Mark said, taking a half step back. You shouldn't be scared of Corey, Jack said, pulling a couple of suitcases out of their car. You should be terrified. Knock it off, Jack, Miranda said. He's only joking. You're perfectly safe with Lucas around. Just don't get the silver wolf mad, Jack said. You mean like Gavin does, Mark said. An odd look came across his face. He lowered his eyebrows and sniffed. Gavin did deserve it that time. Mark paused. Jack, do you? Jack nodded. How many times has Corey almost killed Gavin now? Three? Four? Miranda asked. They all went inside. Soon another car pulled up. A woman and a man got out with several large shopping bags. They smelled like meat. The woman paused and sniffed the air. Then they went into the house. Soon they lit the propane, and their afternoon barbecue was in full gear. They had hours until the moon rose, 
They were safe. I wasn't. I kept to the trees and snuck to the back. My glasses weren't the best. I didn't see the log and tripped on it. My glasses flew off and, for a moment, the world was a blur. I felt around the old dried leaves and found my glasses, but a lens had fallen out. Another moment, I had found it and wedged it back into the frame. These people would drive me off or kill me because of what my family had done, after what I had done to Mark. God, I had bit him and turned him into a monster, like my family, like me. Maybe I should leave. But this was my only hope. I had no money, no job, no ID, no family, no friends, and no place to keep the world safe from me. This was my last hope. I snuck through the trees as quietly as I could until I could look on their immense back lawn. A couple of tables were lined up and set with plates and salads and all kinds of side dishes. A beautiful crystal cluster sat on one of the tables. As the afternoon sun hit it, it glistened with rainbow light. When was the last time I had eaten? A cooler held drinks and three grills were set up, manned by a dark-haired man, a light-haired man, and another man with three scars on his cheek. He had been the man with the train gun that had shot and knocked out my father. The light-haired man sniffed the air, then kissed the dark-haired man. I'm keeping you close by. Corey, you know I can take care of myself, the dark-haired man said. I know, Lucas, the light-haired man whispered. That's one of the reasons I love you. Seriously, did they kiss again? I knew the light-haired man, too. He transformed into the terrifying silver wolf, the wolf that had beaten my father and me, the wolf that leaked the silver light of the moon. I didn't know the dark-haired man, but he pulled out a knife to cut the meat, a silver knife. A middle-aged couple sat at the table. The man looked over some papers and pointed out something to the woman. Anna said, The worm moon is a tricky moon. I've told Steph about it, and she's preparing more obsidian. That's not all I'm preparing, somebody yelled from the house. Lucas, I know the wolves want meat everything, but how does barbecued pizza sound? What do you want on yours? Steph, Corey's rubbing off on me. Make it of meat lovers, the dark-haired man said. Make some room on the grill, because here we come. Steph came out of the house bearing a pizza, and followed by the couple that arrived late, also carrying pizzas. A big man came out, carrying a large platter filled with steaks. He set the platter on a table near the grills, and the three men somehow maneuvered pizzas and steaks until most fit. Edmund, Jack said, what do you think? The big man sniffed the air. Only one. Steph, set an extra setting. Are you sure? Steph said. They were expecting someone else? How many people were in this tribe? Edmund nodded. Well, everything cooks, what say we have a little fun? Football, wolf style. I vote to be on Corey's team, Gavin yelled. Count me out, Edmund, the man at the table said. Arthritis is acting up again. You pups have fun. That's right, Gavin said, sauntering up to the table. We have a new pup. Pup? Barry asked. It's what they call newbies, Mark said, and I'm the newest. Don't worry, Gavin. You'll always be our pretty pup, Jack said. Gavin flipped him off, but Lucas started to laugh. Then Corey... Just wait, Gavin said. I'll get even. He paused and sniffed the air. Edmund? Now he gets it. Gavin, you might be able to heal faster than the rest of us, but your nose is slower, Paola said. I'll shift inside, away from you perverts. In seconds, the guys had transformed into a big black wolf, a small gray wolf, a huge silver wolf, a medium dark gray wolf with three scars on his cheek and then a medium gray wolf walked out of the house. Just a second, Mark said. I'm not as fast as you. It took him a little bit longer, but he changed into a mottled wolf about the size of Gammon's. You learned how on your own, Jay said. That's impressive. Do you know how long it took Corey to gain that kind of control? Anna said. And he almost killed Gavin, Lucas said, and smiled at the silver wolf. Such good memories. The silver wolf barked. Salvador walked into the house and came back with an old football. One, 
two, three, he yelled, and threw the ball. One wolf jumped and caught it. The smallest wolf ran in and grabbed it. Then it was a free-for-all of wolves trying to get the ball. I couldn't keep track of which wolf was which. One minute the big black wolf had it, then the wolf with three scars, then the silver wolf. All the time, the little wolf darted in and kept stealing the ball from everybody. That is, until the first wolf jumped over him. That looked like fun. They wouldn't want a monster with them. They wouldn't want me with them. This lasted for 15 minutes, until Anna yelled, Stakes are done. Why did I think an outsider like me would find sanctuary among these people? I had hurt them. Or tried to. I had bitten Mark. I had cursed him for the rest of his life. There was no way I could make up for that. One wolf went inside. The woman named Steph followed. The guy shifted in the yard and dressed. Corey, you cheated, Gavin said. You're so big and so strong it should be everybody against you, not one-on-one. -on -one. Is pretty pup jealous, Jack said. I stole the ball from both of you so many times. You cheated too, Gavin said. You're so fast I can't even catch you. At least you got the ball, Mark said. Were there any rules out there? Only one. Don't draw blood, Edmund said. How can I approach them? They're all obviously friends, and they shift from human to wolf. Except for the full moon, I don't do that. I don't want to lose control, not like my dad. And tonight's the full moon. I have to do something because this nightmare won't ever stop. I tried to smooth down my hair and neaten my stolen clothes, and I walked out of my hiding spot. My throat was dry. My hands shook a little. I had to do this, or I would kill somebody. They could rip me to pieces in seconds. They already chased me out of the city. They had no reason to help me, especially Mark. With one arm hanging at my side, I folded the other and held it, as if on signal. All the werewolves stared at me. What was I thinking? It's not too late to run away. Look at me. Dirty, starving, ripped and stolen clothes, broken glasses. One of the soles of my shoes was ducked taped on. These were wolves. They could smell my fear. Look at them. Clean, fed, nice clothes. They had no reason to help me. Not after what my family did. But there was no one else I could turn to. The one called Cory, the silver wolf, stood and stared at me. His eyes flickered silver. Paola, the only female wolf in the group, the one that had chased me out of town, folded her arms. Camden, she said, but it sounded more like an accusation. Gavin stepped in front of Mark, his thumbs hooked in his belt. Mark's eyes widened slightly, then hardened. That's Camden? Nobody smiled. Coming here had been a bad idea, but I had to. This was the only place that could keep me from going on a rampage. I looked at Mark, trying to meet his hard gaze, but I was too ashamed. I was a monster, and I looked down at the lawn, humiliated. My hands were cold and started to shake. I felt sick, nauseous. I had bit Mark and cursed him for the rest of his life. I had meant to beg for help from these people, but I couldn't now. There was only one thing I could say. Mark, I'm sorry, I whispered. I wanted to say more, because I had bitten him. I wanted to say I'm sorry for destroying your life, sorry for turning you into a monster like me, sorry for shredding your dreams. They were the words my grandfather should have said to me, because that's what he did to me. The only words that escaped were whispered, I'm sorry. It was time to leave. I had said what I needed to. Even though I don't have any place to go, I'll always be the outcast. I set the little piece of obsidian on the table and walked away. Tonight was the full moon. I had to get away so I didn't kill anyone. I didn't have much time. Camden, we have an extra place at the table and lots of steaks. Do you want to join us? Mark said. I turned a little and wiped the wetness under my glasses. I blabbered as the emotions inside me escaped. I can't. I've caused too much pain. 
I don't deserve to be with anybody, especially nice people like you. All I deserve is your hate. He doesn't know Gavin, Jack whispered. Shush, Jack, Lucas said. Camden, how did it start? I hadn't changed into a wolf even after my voice changed. Grandfather was afraid that the blessing had missed a generation. So right before the full moon back in January, he shifted into a wolf and bit me. I said, my voice getting lower and lower. I rolled up my sleeve and showed them the scars of the bite. It's okay, Camden, Anna said. It's not okay. The next night, Grandfather let me out on my first rampage. He was so proud of me. That's when I bit Mark. Grandfather stole my life. I stole Mark's. I think I put some people in the hospital. I might have killed. I'm a monster. I'm sorry. You did this to my brother? Barry rose from the table, pulling his fist back. By God, I'll make sure you'll pay. Barry, no, Corey yelled. I should never have come here. I'm sorry, I yelled, and sprinted to get away from them. His eyes, Paola said, they're silver. He's fast as you, Jack, Gavin said. This day is getting better. I get to shoot someone. Jack, catch him, Edmund yelled. Get away from me, I screamed. Don't you see? I, I'm a... The pain ripped through my stomach. My bones stretched and changed. It was still hours away from the full moon. I shouldn't change, but the despair inside me, the mistakes I made. Life hurt and kept on hurting. I screamed. The change was happening now. No, not now. I screamed as I doubled over and fell to my knees. My hands shifted into paws. My fingernails changed into claws, and a primal howl ripped from my throat. I can't stop it. No, I screamed. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Get away from me. I don't want to hurt you. I curled up into a ball as my ribs shifted, my stomach shifted, and suddenly the world blurred as I lost my glasses. Camden, Steph said, running towards me. He's a new wolf, Anna said, running up beside her. The change is happening early, and he can't control it. Get away from me before I kill someone, I screamed as my vocal cords vanished. In my mind, the moon rose, its evil light heralding disaster. I howled as the moon's rage inside me exploded. I tried to tell everyone to run away, but it came out as a whimper. I had to stay human, give them a chance to run. I had to fight it, fight the moon, fight the silver. I couldn't hold the monster back any longer. I screamed. Somehow, I had to stay. I woke. My body ached in every place. My mouth tasted foul, like rotten meat kind of foul. I had dried blood around my mouth. Oh God, what had I done? A clock ticked. I opened my eyes to a blurred dream. I lay in a soft bed with a warm down comforter with pine trees on it. Sunlight streamed into a room a bedroom with oak-paneled walls and heavy drapes pulled open, and heavy wooden furniture. I didn't know where I was. For a moment, I didn't remember who I was. The little piece of obsidian lay on the bed next to me. I grabbed it and held it, and remembered who I am. Camden, the fiend. Camden, the monster. Camden, the werewolf. Was it yesterday? I had interrupted their barbecue? Was it yesterday I had tried to apologize? Was it yesterday I shifted into the beast? I buried my head in the pillow and endured the ache in my heart. I'm a monster. There was a soft knock on my door. We're coming in, a voice said. Mark and the woman called Steph entered. Was I still at Wolf Hollow? Mark carried a tray of food grilled meat and bacon and eggs. Steph carried a pile of clothes. I wasn't wearing anything under the comforter. You haven't eaten for a long time. Do you know how many raw steaks you ate last night? Steph said. Almost as many as Gavin, and he hadn't even changed yet. You've slept six hours past the dawn. You fought the change every second, but we got you into one of the cages just in time. I took the cage next to yours because I was worried about you. How are you feeling? Mark said. Not very well, I said. Full moon hangover. Here's some clothes. These might be a little big. They belong to our son, Steph said. We tried washing your old clothes, but they disintegrated. 
I'm sorry, I said, and felt around for my glasses. I didn't mean to cause trouble. Mark handed me my glasses and set the tray down on the bed. Maybe it's good trouble. I understand that the full moon back in January was the first time you changed as well. Why don't we talk about it while we eat? Why don't you hate me, I yelled. That's all I deserve. I did, two months ago. But you are as much a victim as me, Mark said. Camden, you're with people who understand. You don't have to be afraid of who you are, Steph said. I talked to Edmund, and he said there's always room in our tribe for one more. Come and join us outside when you're ready. Your new family is waiting. We're one royally screwed up family, Gavin yelled in the door. I wish I had my trank gun yesterday when you started shifting. Gavin, don't you have a sympathetic bone in your body, Steph said. Nope, he laughed and sauntered down the hall. But I'm a monster. I bit Mark. I don't know how many people I've hurt or maybe killed, I said. Steph sat on the bed and took my hand. You're not a monster or a murderer. According to Jack, the three of you traveled as a pack. Jack sniffed all the bodies and victims. Only two had your scent. You clawed someone, but they were taken to the hospital and survived. And you bit Mark. The rest had East and Scent and your grandfathers. You didn't kill anyone. Now that I understand, I don't blame you. Camden, you're not alone anymore, Mark said and held my other hand. We'll figure this out. Together. Thank you, everybody, for joining me for this interlude between wolf stories. Another one will be coming up as soon as I write it. Thanks for listening. Peace. Oh, and remember to keep your obsidian and your silver close by, just in case. On the full moon called the worm moon. The full moon in March.